Okay, so to start, I've got my lamp. I was going to try and take the lampshade off, but I'm not going to lie. I can't work out how I get it off. So that is a later me problem, and I'm just going to paint around it. Probably not the best idea, but I know I'm not going to keep this lampshade on anyway. In fact, I might actually ask my mum to help me take this off. Because once this is off, I'll decorate this separately. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix up some acrylic paint. This is just from um, Poundland, and you get a set of like, quite neutral colours. So I'll probably use a mixture of this yellow, brown and white to get kind of a neutrally colour. And then going to add in some baking powder and just paint that on with a paintbrush i want it to be kind of like a stony texture so i thought like this would work well but first what of course is getting this lampshade off um i tested it and the lamp does work i also thought i'd test tell you that because that's always a good thing to do with a cherry shop lamp um they should test them before they give it to you but just in case um and it also came with a lamp light bulb already so super happy about that okay so obviously i need quite a lot of paint to cover this whole thing so i'm going to start with white whenever you want a lighter color always start with white because i always end up adding it in and then you have to add in so much more to kind of get the lightish coverage but i'm probably going to use like a lot of that because it's got to cover my whole lamp and that's a lot of lamp to cover um you could also like try and find some wall paint i uh, to be fair i can't remember what i used last time i have a feeling i did just use kind of normal paints like these but I want to get kind of a more earthy, neutral vibe. I'm not quite sure what I want. This is the kind of colour I got last time. which And this is the texture I got last time as well. Excluding the hair that's on that. Um, so a bit of this, like a yellow. And let's mix that up and see what sort of colour we get. And see if we're going to have enough to kind of cover the whole of the lamp when you do put the baking powder in it somehow it like extends it and makes it go a bit further um i think i am gonna add in a bit more white i will end up using probably most of this white as i said this was set as a pound from poundland so i don't really mind if i use up most of it and i was thinking i get a white in i got a pack of like primary colors and i'm feeling a white's in there as well um so I do have a spare white. I just don't want it to be too pinky, which is not coming up super pinky, which is good. Um, I think that's quite a good colour. So now I'm just going to literally just chuck in a bit of this. I'm not quite sure how much I'm meant to put in. Um, also, I'm not sure if it's meant to be baking powder or whatever, but I'm going to put a bit of baking powder. Because I feel like anything that's like gritty will just give it a bit of texture. Oh, and it is. It is sort of bubbling up, which is what you want. And sort of just giving it a kind of different texture this also does help it adhere to such a kind of matte surface um but yeah let's just start painting it on and see how we go Okay, so I know a couple of you are going to be like, oh my gosh, don't ruin a lampshade. But I think I basically years ago made that macrame lamp. I used an embroidery hoop and a coat hanger and managed to get it to work. However, having this structure already in there, I could just cut off this plasticky cover and this material, which I don't love. And I've got a whole thing of macrame. I mean, it would take me ages, but I think if I sit a fit with a film on, I could do this. I will make up the macrame pattern as I go. I'm thinking I might literally just do a couple of rows of square knots and then just do like tassels down. I'm not sure, but I think I'm just gonna go for it. It cost me three pound fifty this whole lamp, I think. So I'm just gonna cut it off and start putting the macrame around it, and then I can decide later on what I'm gonna do. Okay, so I've taken off the material and 
I've got a slight issue is that the only way that the bottom hoop and the top hoop is connected is this plastic. So I have made a bit of a cut in it to get this material off. However, if I take off this plastic, I'm gonna have the same problem is I'm not gonna have a bottom rung. However, do I need that? Amy, half a through this DIY. Yes, you do need that. Don't cut it. You're gonna give yourself more problems. If I'm just gonna hang, I'm thinking out loud. I'm thinking, actually, the problem I had with the homemade one is that I didn't have a way to hang it on here. But if I take off this bottom hoop, I've got basically this top hoop, which is attached to this. And that is all I need, in theory. This bottom hoop is great, but I don't really need it if I'm using this top rung as my thing to hang back my mouth. So I'm thinking in conclusion, I can't actually cut it. I had a panic there and didn't think, but actually I didn't really need this bottom circle. So I can cut this off and I'll still have this structure here. I am going to cut it not too high up just because I'm not quite sure how strong this metal thing is. How it does feel like metal. Anyway, I'm going to cut this and get back to you. Okay, so now I have my base of my lamp or the top rung off my lamp so i suppose the top of my lamp not the base of my lamp i can now start attaching my macrame now you always need a ton more than you think in length so i'm just gonna get out loads and yes it might look like a waste but i promise you once you start knotting you will use it so i just want to see how far so i feel like like that is long enough so that's one two three four five six seven times the length of what i'm gonna need i feel like is that excessive maybe but i'm really not sure i've been a long time since i'm at but then obviously you fold it so that will cut out half the length i was like okay maybe i need it to be even longer i forgot about the folding so basically to attach a macrame cord you basically fold it in half flip it over like that and pull it through now you can do that either which way um either over or under but essentially that is it i think though that is enough cord that is about probably triple the length i'd want it maybe even four times the length so i think that's what i'm going to go for um however you need one to go off of so i'm going to take this off but that was just to show you guys how you do it i'm trying to do square knots the whole row top okay so this is actually a couple of days later the other day i did two rows of square knots like you saw me doing however i thought i would just put it on there just to see what it looks like i thought it'd be easier to knot on here and i've made a massive error if i said i didn't need that bottom rung well i do because now the light bulb is coming out the top so essentially this should have been the bottom and the top rung that we cut off should have been at the top because now my macrame is hanging lower than the lamp, the light bulb. And to be fair, that's not even as low as it's meant to go. It's actually meant to sit there, which would mean that the <laughs> the lamp macrame would be covering the whole of the bottom of the lamp. So I've made a big mistake here. Not quite sure how I can rectify this. Um, but I mean, this may never get included in the video because I may never work it out. But I'm going to try and work it out. My initial thought is, can I bend these down enough that it would just get me up to about here? Because that's all I really need. And then just do a shorter kind of macro. Annoyingly, it's not actually too bad in terms of the drop to the lamp. But as I said, it's meant to sit here and it is not. This is one of the issues I do run into because I'm not really much of a planner. I'm more of a just go for it and see. And um, this is the point where you can't go for it and see. I really should have kept this on because that would have sat hold on is essentially the top of the lamp and this would have been the bottom if that makes sense so this should have sat like that and i should have macrame from the top here down but i didn't do that so hmm we have an issue i would find a way to put something on here on top of the lamp the light bulb like a little hook because then if this sits on the lamp the light bulb then that would be fine but i don't know how i would do that have something sit on the light bulb unless i literally just make a little kind of platform here 
stick this on the platform and the platform just kind of balances on top of the light bulb. That could work. And then I wouldn't waste all my hard work and materials. My fan on, so apologies for the audio, but I finished the macrame portion. I'm just going to throw out these edges. I actually trimmed them last night. I'm going to throw them out. I've actually just balanced it on top of a little wooden kind of circle that I had. Obviously, if I'm actually putting this on, I will probably just take off the lampshade if I need it for light um, until I find a better solution. Um, but to be honest, it's more for decoration, so I probably won't be putting this on too much. Um, but I'm just going to throw out these edges and it's done. So for this next DIY, I'm just using that paint that I had originally um, for, that I was gonna use for the lamp. I'm actually just gonna paint these little dinosaur friends that I got in the charity shop for like a pound. Um, I thought they were really cute, but I didn't like all of the different kind of shades on them. I just wanted them to all be one color. So I'm gonna use this paint that I originally was gonna use for my lamp, but ended up using it different for my lamp. I'm gonna use this to paint my little dinosaur friends i think they're really cute so i'm just gonna get painting these with my bike my baking soda my baking powder and paint mix so to dry our little dinosaur friend a little bit faster i'm actually just gonna get my hair dryer and try and dry him like that and see if it works same as a heat gun not quite sure if it will but we're gonna try it um on kind of a medium ish setting and hope that it just dries it a little bit quicker so i can get coats on my little dinosaur friends a little bit sooner but i feel like it's gonna look super cute a bit ceramic-y a bit nice and just like a funky texture on a little dinosaur friend All right, so hot dry hair dryer actually worked quite well on that. He's a little bit tacky, but I still think he will be all right for another coat. I just think giving this like an all over rougher texture will just make it look a bit more funky. And who doesn't want a funky little spiky dinosaur with in a cute neutral color? I just think that this will look really cute. I'm really tempted to actually attach this to two wooden blocks that I will um screw together and use it as like a bookend. I think that looks so cute. Um because I've got a shelf where I keep my books and it it's budged up against one side, but the other side is free. So I just need like one book end and i actually think this would work perfectly as an edge of a book end like i think that looks so cute and adorable i am gonna have to mix up, mix up some more paint but now i know i'm gonna use him as a book end i don't feel so bad about doing a different color so i don't have to get kind of a precise match but oh my gosh i think he'll look so cute as a little book end i think i might do that actually See, I quite often during my creative process will just change it <laughs> as I'm going um, and just kind of see what it's coming out like and then kind of just decide from there if I want to change it, what I want to change and the same with like with the lamp when I saw that wasn't working, I knew there was like another use I could use for the paint um, quite quickly. So while this coat is drying, I'm going to mix up another load of paint. Um, not what I'm trying to get it kind of similar color, but I'm not a bit. I'm not worried. I, in fact, I might do it a little bit darker just so it covers a little bit better. But let's mix up some more paint and paint another coat on my dinosaur. scrap like a wood i'm just gonna cut it down the middle it's not on a very central line but we're gonna try it anyway okay so with some help from mum and dad um these are sawed into two halves so i'm just gonna work out what's why i want it i feel like that one's the best one to be upwards and then that one can be down with kind of the attractive face facing forwards if i screw them in like that i'm gonna file down this side down there but i thought that would look really good obviously you could use mic screws nails 
wood glue, I can only find super glue and some clamps. So I've just clamped it like that. We'll leave it overnight and hope it sticks. Um, I put some on the edge of the wood and then I also put a strip there. Obviously, we've got a little, little screw here, which we will find a way to cover. Um, but that's how I'm going to leave it for tonight, I think. I'm going to glue on my little dinosaur. I'm just going to glue him on to my bookends. <laughs> For this next DIY, I'm going to turn this tote bag into like a cute thrifting tote bag. I think that'd be really, really cute. So I went onto Canva and made up my design. I just typed in what I wanted it to say. And then I put that over to Cricut and took out of the, took the background out and then set it ready on the right size just so it'd fit onto my bag nice i then mirror imaged it so when i iron it on it'll be perfect and yeah that's how i did it so like i do for all of my cricket go i'm just going to take out anything that i don't want to be ironed on My design now is all ready to be flipped over and ironed on. I'm going to do that off camera. Um, you've seen me do it loads of times. I've got some greasy paper, which I actually leave in my Cricut box. I'm going to put that over the top, iron it over until it's stuck on, peel off the backing, and then we'll have the final result. <laughs> 